Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another video from Fanboys Forever, and today I'm excited to talk about my love for one of the greatest video game icons of all time, Samus Aran, the star of the Metroid series of video games. Today, while I'm recording this video, it is August the 6th, meaning it is, to the day, the 35th anniversary of the release of the original Metroid video game in 1986 in Japan. And to celebrate this momentous occasion, Nintendo issued a tweet, <laughs> but more importantly, they're releasing a brand new Metroid game, Metroid 5 Dread. And so in anticipation of that game, I've certainly been going back through and replaying some of my old favorite Metroid games and even doing a little bit of artwork. Let's go ahead and start with maybe the more approachable project, and that is Perler Bead Art. For those who may not be familiar with Perler Beads, they're tiny little individual plastic beads that fit on a little tray. And on this transparent little plastic piece, there are all kinds of little indentions to fit those individual beads on. In other words, it's a fancy way of doing pixel art, only in the real world. Once you have all of the individual pixels lined up, you can create pretty well anything. It's very easy to find pixel maps and different sorts of reference materials online so that you can create pretty much anything you like. In my case, I wanted to recreate Samus from the quintessential classic, Super Metroid. Getting a closer look, you can see what I'm talking about with each individual little bead. And if you look really closely, you can see that these have been melted or fused together. That's because when you're done, you put wax paper over the board and then take an iron on a low setting and very gently melt some of the beads together. And what you end up getting is a 2D representation of your favorite video game character or whatever else you want to make. As you can see, it's only this thick. And on the other side, it's just a mirror image of what you had on the other. I really enjoyed this project, and if you haven't gotten a chance to try Perler Beads, then give it a shot, especially if you're like me and you're into old school video games. It's a great way to kind of craft and celebrate those old releases. The next art piece I completed was a lot more recent and was in celebration of Metroid 4, Metroid Fusion, which came out on the Game Boy Advance back in 2002. That's how long it's been from Metroid 4 to the upcoming Metroid 5, so it's quite a gap of time. This statue was meant to celebrate her fusion suit, which is when Samus is attacked by a mysterious alien life form and then must be fused with the cells of a Metroid. And as you can see, there is that blue kind of goo covering her traditional armor. I've always really been struck by this look and I wanted to try my hand at it. So let's go ahead and talk about the steps that it took to actually complete this project. The first thing I did was develop an armature, which I forgot to take a picture of. An armature is very simple to make. It's just where you take wire. Uh, armature wire can be bought at most craft stores. And you simply twist it together, make some legs, make some arms, and then you cover it in aluminum foil. This is done so that for one thing, you can save the amount of clay you have to use. And it's also very difficult and kind of risky to bake very thick pieces of clay as they're much more prone to breakage. This was done with polymer clay, which is a special type of clay that does not dry if left out in open air. And it's definitely the preferred choice for a lot of sculptors. I used Super Sculpey. And as you can see in this photo, I have my armature covered with a thin coating of Super Sculpey. Keep in mind that under that is about an inch thickness of aluminum foil and my wire armature. As you can see, my pose isn't finalized yet. As I continued to sculpt it, I kind of worked out some of the details very roughly. At this point, since the clay doesn't dry, you're not really on a time limit, and you're just trying to feel out exactly what you need to do to get all the proportions right. Early on, I wasn't exactly satisfied with some of the proportions, so I kept working on it. Um, I also noticed she was seeming a little uh, flat or two-dimensional, so I really wanted to work on making her a little more 3D and certainly more rounded. As I worked, I was adding all the little details as well, like trying to get the muscles right, which was very difficult. Once I had all that worked out, I started adding some of the more technical suit details as well, and even added a hand, which uh, I thought would be a lot harder than it was. It was actually very easy to work with the clay, even when it got that thin. Finally, once uh, I had those details in place, it was time for my very first baking. 
Now, the reason you want to bake it as you go through, and not just when it's completely done, is if you don't, then as you work with it, you will accidentally ruin the work that you've done because the clay is so soft. It's a much better idea to bake it. So I bake this at about 250 at about 15 minutes, which is really all it takes to cure that amount of Sculpey. Once it was done, I took it out of the oven and I began working on some of the other details, things like the arm cannon and getting things like the tubes on the mask right. Throughout the process, I was looking at a lot of different reference material and especially this turnaround was very helpful in getting all the fine details. You'll notice, of course, that my Samus doesn't exactly have these same proportions, which it was never meant to. My Samus is more of a love letter to those old Nintendo Power covers by Will Vinton, where there was claymation representations of Mario and other Nintendo characters. That's more of the aesthetic that I was going for, and I also kind of kept in some of the proportions of Samus's original look from Super Metroid and her new Fusion costume. Once it was all done, I then started the painting process. Believe it or not, the painting process took almost as long as the actual sculpting itself, as I found that it was very, very difficult to get each and every little nook and cranny painted correctly and consistently. This is a product of not being able to paint it before you assemble it, and because Samus was uh, very much posed with one foot out and one of her elbows in and one arm outstretched and all these little technical details, it was much more of a challenge than I anticipated to get all of the paint into all the different spots. And as you can tell by these pictures, I went through quite a few iterations of what I thought the paint should be. Eventually, I was attempting to paint on like different shadow details and all these different highlights. And what I thought at first was looking pretty cool, eventually ended up looking fairly messy uh, as you looked at it a little more closely. As I worked, I came to what I hoped was more of a happy medium between the two with more of a clean and shadowed look so that both kinds of styles were fairly prevalent in the finished product. Once I was done, I had my completed Samus sculpture. So taking more of a close look at all the fine details, you can see that I had to use some very complex reference materials to try and get a good facsimile of Samus's arm cannon. I didn't get it exactly right, but what I was able to do is cut out pieces of Sculpey and layer on top of each other to achieve the kind of 3D layers from the arm buster. After that, you can see that this outer part with the blue kind of Metroid goo is definitely separate, and I put it over the chest, and there's definitely sculpted indentions here to make sure that there was a 3D look, as if the blue alien had kind of covered right over Samus's armor, and that's definitely the look I wanted. I didn't just want it to look like it had been painted on, but that there was actually some sort of 3D presence there. Also, on the helmet, this was also a very challenging part because of some of these smaller technical details. You can see these hoses originally were probably meant to be more embedded inside of the helmet, but due to me not wanting to ruin some of the progress I'd made, they're more situated on the outside. Also, the helmet shape itself was slightly modified for Metroid Fusion. And because of that, I um, and because of that, it took a little while to engrave this design in the visor, and then etch out the excess clay, so that it had more of a 3D effect with an overhang at the top of the head there. Also challenging was the little rebreather kind of instrument right there at the bottom of the helmet. This was kind of a challenge to get right, and finally I came to something that I was well satisfied with. You can see that going on down, the legs were very difficult because of all of the kind of 3D nature of the alien goo, the Metroid kind of cells covering the suit in different ways. I had to look at the reference material quite a bit to get it at least fairly right. Eventually it ended up being more of my own version. As I said earlier, the hand was fairly challenging, but a little bit easier than I thought it would be. It's also worth keeping in mind that Samus actually has kind of a Batman a scallop thing going on with her gauntlet and Metroid Fusion. On the back, you can see that I did all this backpack sculpting, and originally these were meant to be much more circular, but got pressed in due to the baking process. Something that I would do differently next time is I would bake these little balls of energy first so that they would be hard enough for me to just shove in, and then I could bake it all together. But it's definitely a lesson for another time. You can see that I've done the ridge of the helmet there and wanted there to be shadow under it to suggest it's covering quite a bit of the backpack. Onto the back, you can see more of the kind of alien goo covering her body as it goes around. 
we come back to the arm cannon and back to the front. I was satisfied that when viewed to the side, she does look fairly similar to the actual Metroid Fusion sprite, so I was glad that I ended up with something fairly representative of the game at the end. The color choices were interesting because what I did was I ended up finding paint that was metallic in nature for any part of Samus's actual armor underneath the Metroid goo. And so definitely I was picking out colors that were metallic, like this red metallic and this green metallic that I mixed with blue to get the visor color. As some of the art and the video game sprite work itself kind of contradicted each other. On whether Samus's visor is supposed to be blue or green, it's really hard to say, so I ended up doing a halfway point. I used a gold paint that was actually fairly difficult to work with. These are just acrylic paints that you can find anywhere at Walmart. They're just the cheaper brand. As for the blue goo itself, I kind of bought the most vibrant blue I could find, but I didn't want it to be as metallic as the other parts to suggest that this was something more organic that was covering more metal. As you can see, the shininess has a nice contrast with the more matte finish over the goo here that's covering the rest of this model. I still need to work on getting her affixed to a base, but I thought this may be the very best time to show it off since I just completed it, and this is the very day for Samus's 35th anniversary. Since this was my very first polymer clay sculpture I've ever made, I enjoyed the experience tremendously, and in the end, I think she did turn out to be pretty much what I had had in mind. I definitely learned a lot of lessons from this, and I'm hoping to do another polymer clay statue soon. As for scale, it is important to know just what size this thing is, so much like an action figure review. Uh, she is almost in about the 6 inch scale, which I think was more of a subconscious decision than anything else, as that's the majority of figures that I have. And you can see here we have a fellow space warrior, Andros, here from the Power Rangers Lightning Collection. And he's pretty well eye to eye. Of course, Samus's armor does bulk her up and add a little bit of height. And you can see more of the standard female uh, body type in the six inch scale. It's about right considering she, her height would be boosted just a little bit. So I think it ends up being correct. I wanna thank you for taking the time to check out my artwork today. It means the world to me. Of course, let me know down in the comments down below if you have ever played a Metroid game and which one was your favorite. Are you like me and you love Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion? Let me know down below, and let me know if you're looking forward to Metroid Dread. I know I am, and I cannot wait for it to come out in October. I appreciate your support so much. Be sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you can see more videos based on all the things we love with video games, action figures, movies, you name it, and we'll keep providing that content. As always, God bless you and yours, and I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. God bless. Fanboy out.